Dr. Anthony Gessen coming at you from Lake Tahoe. And I've been getting a lot of questions recently about protein and that the fact that people think that it keeps you out of ketosis and then it's bad for ketogenic diets. I think this is bogus. I think that people are getting too little protein on a ketogenic diet. And I'm here to tell you why in just a quick little rant so we won't get too crazy. Just dive right in. Um, one, protein increases insulin. Yes, this is a fact. I think that people are misunderstood in the fact that only carbohydrates and protein increase insulin. Fat also increases insulin. So that means that if you eat carbohydrates, insulin goes up way high. You eat protein, a little bit less, but still goes up. You eat fat, same thing, still goes up. So you're drinking your Bulletproof coffee in the morning, your insulin is still increasing. And so this is why people fast. The only way to get around insulin being increased is just by not eating food because every food increases insulin. So this is not a problem with protein. Individually, fat also increases insulin. Okay, point number two. People are scared in the ketogenic community of what's called gluconeogenesis. So this is just creating glucose endogenously in your body. And so people think that if you eat protein, that it's just gonna ultimately cascade in just in excessive amounts, create glucose, and your blood glucose will spike infinitely. That's not how things work. So when you eat a ketogenic diet, your blood glucose doesn't go from 80 to zero. You need blood glucose for vital functions in your body. For instance, red blood cells, they don't have mitochondria, they can't use ketones, so you need glucose. What happens when you don't eat glucose? Your body can just make it. And so you, you can use things in your body to make glucose, but it's not, like it's an infinite thing. So what happens is you make glucose as you need it, but your body primarily uses fat to make glucose, okay? So this is gonna come as, as a surprise to a lot of people watching this, that fat increases gluconeogenesis more than protein does. So I try glyceride, so the glycerol backbone in a fat goes to your liver and makes glucose and raises glucose to what you need. So gluconeogenesis is a demand-driven process, meaning your body will only make as much as it needs from the things that you eat or the things that you're burning. So mostly from fat, very little from protein. Your, your body isn't just on an endless rant of making glucose and turning it into chocolate cake in your bloodstream because you're eating too much of it. It is just not a fact. It is, does not happen. And so that just needs to be tossed to the side. Your body creates more glucose from fat than it does from protein, okay? Um, another thing, protein is more satiating than fat. So a lot of times what people do is they limit their protein to 30, 40 grams, which is incredibly low, limit their carbohydrates to 10 to 20 grams, and then eat a ridiculous amount of fat. What happens is like fat is pretty satiating, but protein is by far more satiating than fat. It also has more nutrients, and we can talk about that in another video. But this is something that if you're going to be full on a ketogenic diet, and let's say your goal is weight loss, you don't want to be over consuming fat. Your body already has stored body fat, and that's what you want to be using and not the fat that you keep consuming. So people tend to overeat fat when they keep the protein low, which is a lot of reasons why people have plateaus and don't lose weight when they're on a ketogenic diet and limiting protein in an excessive amount. Not only that, but protein has a much higher thermic, thermic effect of food. So what that means is that if you eat protein, for example, your body is, is required to use more energy to burn that fuel source and use it than it is to fat. For example, if you eat a steak and you'll say it's 100 calories of steak, your body only can store about 75% of that as actual calories because it takes 25% to burn that or use it as fuel, whereas fat's about 98%. So you're getting all of the calories from fat, but you're getting less calories from protein. So, I mean, th this is just a non-issue. I think when people limit their protein intake, they can have problems like stalling weight loss and plateaus. They can have thyroid problems. They can have a lot of the hormonal problems that people think, like women freaking out like, oh my, my hormones are going crazy, I'm losing my hair. That's from under eating generally and mostly under eating protein, okay? So the question is, how much protein should you eat and how should you set up your macros and your percentages of a ketogenic diet? The answer is, if you're just a normal person and you're not doing crazy workouts or anything like that, you should be doing 0.8 grams per pound of lean body mass. So get your body fat done and then whatever your lean body mass is, multiply that by 0.8 and that's the minimum amount of protein that you should be getting. If you're an athlete or you're working out and you're trying to build muscle, it should be anywhere between one and 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. And so this may be way more than people are consuming and this is the floor that you should be getting. So you can eat more than that and you're not gonna create a bunch of glucose in your bloodstream, but if you get 
less than that, I think that that's a huge, huge problem. If you're trying to figure out how you should set up your macronutrients, specifically for yourself, one thing you should do is one, set that protein goal ahead of time and make sure you get that every single day. Then two, reduce the carbohydrates to say anywhere between 20 and 50 of total carbohydrates, not net carbohydrates, and then fill the fat in with the rest. And so that should be the way you think about setting up your macronutrients instead of thinking about it in percentages of, I need to have 5% carbohydrates, 10% protein, 85% fat. It doesn't work that way. So think about protein first as a goal, then limiting the carbohydrates, and then filling in fat at the end. So if you're having trouble with the ketogenic diet, and you're maybe not eating that much or afraid of protein because you think it'll kick you out of ketosis, give it a go. And if you're skeptical and you think that this video is bogus, then just try it. I did a carnivore diet where I ate only steak and only meat for 30 days and my glucose went down. I stayed in ketosis, the same levels as if I were to have 90% fat, but 0.8 to 1.0 millimolars. If this steak was turning into glucose in my bloodstream, that would not have happened. So if you're skeptical, I'd say give it a go, test yourself, see how you feel. A lot, of, a lot of you watching this will probably feel way better, okay? So this is the first video. If you guys like this, um, put in some comments and subscribe below. There's gonna be more videos to come. And if you have any questions or concerns, you wanna reach out to me directly, just head to my Instagram, which is instagram.com slash dranthonygustin. And I reply to every DM on there. So shoot me a message and I'll get back to you right away. And thanks for watching.